Hello everybody, in this video I'll show you how we automated drawing creation. We had a need uh, to create a tag plate by inserting all this special text and the QR code from data from the Excel table. So here is an Excel table we'll use. Uh, it also includes sheet properties. The properties of the text we will uh, insert in the drawing like uh, size, style, rotation, position, and more. Additionally, it includes sheet settings, uh, such as template pass, plugin pass, directories for the PDF files to be saved, and also drawings to be saved. So, how does it work? First, we have the initial form with all the settings here. You can see all the headers from the table are here. Also, all the parameters I mentioned. Uh, project settings paths also are here. And we can browse uh, each one by clicking the button. So, just click the button when we can select the path or the file we need. Okay. Uh, we also can change text properties here. Uh, we can also check and check if we want to print this info on AutoCAD or not. So simply uncheck, click apply. Uh, can you see it will disappear in properties sheet? Okay, click OK. And another little trick is that we need also QR codes in the Excel table. I'm not exactly sure why, but we do. I'll show you how it works. Uh, just click the insert QR code button and it will add the QR code based on the text they have. If the column doesn't exist, it will create a new one and insert the QR code image. And that's it. All right, uh, let's get started with the drawings. I have an empty folder here and I'll just click the run AutoCAD button and you'll see what happens. The drawings are being created super quickly. There are 23 of them, and now they are ready. It's starting to publish the PDF files. Can you see? It's really fast. Okay, we will wait, and here we have all the PDFs done. Let's open one to check. Looks good. And we have all the information we had in the table, but here we see an empty space. This is the name text. It's missing. So let's just fill in these cells. I'll type some info just to check how it works. So now let's run it again. Okay, it starts running quite quickly again. So all the drawings are ready. Uh, again, it starts uh, to create PDF files, so we need to wait a little bit. Okay, it's also ready. So you can see here, uh, all of PDF files are ready, so just open any PDF. Okay, this information is already here. So it's really quick to update the table and recreate all the drawings from scratch. All right. Let's take a look at our code to see how it works. We'll go button by button in the ribbon panel. The first button is the settings button. When you click it, the settings form opens. The form is here. We already saw it. Let's open it to look at the code. In the form window, right click and choose view code. All right, the first event is form load. When the form loads, it checks if the required sheets are present and initializes the template settings. What does it mean? We need two sheets, properties and settings. If they don't exist, the code creates them. All right, so we called the method check required sheets, and this method is checking the required sheet. So it just looks if both sheets are present or not. If they don't exist, we simply create them. You see, we have the sheet names. I keep all the string names in a constant class. 
So if you want to rename something, I just change it in one place. So again, this method only checks for the two required sheets. The next method is focus first sheet. It just activates the first sheet in the workbook. Then the next one is initialize template settings. This method reads the values from the settings sheet, like the template path, plugin path, and all the other path. So when our form loads, it takes the data from the settings sheet and puts it and puts it into the Windows field. So all these fields are being filled in with the data from the Excel settings sheet. The next method is get initial items. These initial items are just the headers from our first sheet. So we read them all and put them into the Windows form. Then we also read the data from the properties sheet. If some items were checked before and saved to the sheet, the method reads the data and restores them in to, uh, into the data grid view. If you open the method get saved items, you can see that it reads all the data and sets the corresponding check buttons to true. So now all the saved items are checked and the data is filled in from the properties sheet to data grid view. That's what this method does. And one more thing, uh, if the required sheet doesn't exist, the program simply asks us and creates it automatically. Okay, uh, the next step is to generate the QR code. For this, we use the QR code reference. Uh, we take the QR code nugget package and it's quite easy. We just generate the code, save it as PNG and insert it into the row step by step. And actually, that's it. Then we need to send data to AutoCAD. Because the new AutoCAD runs on .NET 8 and Excel uses an older framework, we use a small workaround. I create a temporary JSON file and put all the properties into it. I need all the paths, all the data and all the parameters. So I created a project config class which includes the print item config. Here we have properties of the text like size, style, position and so on. I also add a constructor for this class to fill in these values. Okay, when we have it done, let's save it to the JSON file. Uh, so just click save to JSON and let's see how it looks. You see, we have all of our settings and all of our data here. The next step is creating the driver. Uh, we will use silent mode and launch our plugin from the core console. What does it mean? When we click the run AutoCAD button, a script file is created. If we open the script file, we can see that the core console received two commands. First, to load our DLL and second to run the command. So let's take a closer look. All right, now we will work with AutoCAD part. I rebuilt the project just to make easier to copy the path to our plugin file. So uh, copy the path. After that, start AutoCAD. Okay. Uh, in the AutoCAD command line, we type net load in order to load our plugin. Paste the path to our plugin and uh, that, that's it. Let's confirm that it is always loaded. Okay, now here let's set a breakpoint and go step by step. I need to enter our command. First, the program, first the progress form appears and then we continue. 
we read the JSON path and from the JSON file we load the data. Okay, uh, let's uh, move it up a little bit. So uh, we need the data, the configuration, and we just read them. The document, the PDF files, and everything else we had here. And we also read the uh, data for each uh, elements. You see, we already have this tag and all the needed information. Okay, that's clear. After that, we go through all the data and create a new drawing using the template drawing. For creating the drawing, we use silent mode. We just read the database of the template without opening it. So, we read the database, save it with another name, and insert all the needed text and save it again. And that's it. Uh, let's check. And so, here. Yeah. Uh, it's ready. So, we repeat this for all the drawings until they are all done. You can see in the progress bar, two drawings, two drawings are already finished. So we just go row by row and wait until everything is created. Uh, it doesn't take long. So, okay, it seems that everything are done. Let's check it again. Yeah, all of the drawings are done. Now let's go to the next step, publishing to PDF. So we just uh, repeat the usual batch plot. Uh, so we collect uh, a data entry for each drawing and uh, we use an uh, Batch plot publishing, so each drawing should be opened and save this PDF. So open the PDF and can see that it works. So this is the logic of our plugin. Here we also use the same project config with parameter, path, settings, and data, and uh, we also have a class for QR code generation, just like we had in Excel. The only difference here is that the QR code is created in model space, saved as a block, and then inserted in the right place. So that's it. I don't think I will create a full course about this, because these are special cases we needed, and I, I built it for us but maybe some parts of the code could be useful for you. So let me know, I can record a separate video about any part you need. Also, I leave links to another video course about C-sharp programming for Plan3D and to a custom library I created in Python. If you want more details, just leave the comment with the part you're interested in. Thank you and bye.